Hey everybody, welcome to EDC Ready. I'm your host, Mr. EDC. Today we're going to take apart the Spyderco Dragonfly. Now, Dragonfly is a really great uh, small knife. It's very, it's, it's very ergonomic and it has a fidget factor that a lot of people don't expect it to have. At least, I didn't expect it to have this kind of fidget factor. But I'll show a video on the fidget factor of a Dragonfly from Spyderco. But today what I am going to do is I'm going to do a disassembly because I haven't done a disassembly of this knife in a really long time. I haven't maintained it in a really long time. I've probably only taken it apart maybe once in the last six months that I had it. So yeah, so since this is going to be uh, one of the first few times I'm going to do it, uh, I might uh, mess up a little bit but I think you should be used to that looking at my QSP Deva disassembly. And yeah, so let's just, here we go. I have here my uh, T8 drill bit here. Uh, sorry, uh, T8 Torx bit here and I'm going to start unscrewing everything now while I'm unscrewing and taking everything apart I just wanna like give a little bit of shout out to my patreon account because as of this point I have no patreon I have no patrons yet but you know as you can see you know doing uh, gear reviews and all these kind of reviews it takes time and it takes money so if you want to help by you know promoting the channel just watching the video and sharing it that'll be great but at the same time if you want to help the channel grow a little bit maybe give a little bit of financial assistance by the end by the end of the month if you have a few extra dollars you can like help out the channel i really 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 appreciate that so the thing about this knife is that it's pretty much a, an integral knife meaning that it's just technically one piece of uh, material here and uh, the knife kind of just slots in along with the lock bar so now pushing this thing out again this is a non free spinning pivot because it uh, it's a D shape right here you see that it is a D shape yeah now another thing you notice is that you have these little black washers here this is actually on the outside of the knife it's kind of it kind of gives like a little bit of a, I don't know it kind of like gives a bit of a barrier between the FRN and the uh, the the pivot screws right there now I am sure it's on both sides but I think I've lost one side so it, actually it's no big deal to be honest once you tighten it you screw it down it's gonna work just fine without it but uh oh wait, no wait here's the other one it was hiding all right all right you gotta keep that in mind keep that in mind all right now I'm just gonna pull out the blade because there's nothing else holding on to it and you have one final screw here now this screw is the uh, lock bar screw right here so it holds the lock bar in place and that is using a, uh, a T6 bit here and I can take out this screw so the uh, Spyderco uh, Dragonfly this is the Dragonfly 2 VG10 steel is well from my experience one of the most popular EDC knives out there just because how small and light and so it's just really easy to carry okay I'm gonna film a full review a little bit later on I put some lock tag on there I'm gonna film a full review a little bit later on so just watch out for that one uh, just let's push this out all right if you guys are curious on see another d-shaped pivot right there great I love non free spinning pivots now if you guys are curious on what time it is it's like somewhere around 11 30 at night i realize i haven't shot any videos yet so i'm like you know what let's just uh take a break from taking a break and shoot another video so what this is this is uh, the actual spring in the lock bar that goes into a little hole here, right here it goes in all the way and then the lock bar just stays in there and then this is what provides the tension for it to go up and down and to hold it in so as you can see here, this is how lock bar works. A uh, back lock, sorry. This is how back lock works. So it is pretty much works like this. This is going to be here. This is going to be the blade, and the blade is like that, right? When it's inside, and when you push it out, this thing is going to go above uh, the tang of the blade, and then the this little L shape here is going to go in there like that, and then it pretty much locks like this. Now, based on Blade HQ's experiment the uh, back lock is the strongest uh, locking system there is compared to uh, they tested liner lock or frame lock so and so forth now they did not manage to test an access lock but uh, they did test every other lock that i'm aware of and then it locks in here okay 
so now so this is just an empty piece of uh, FRN here there's nothing much happening inside you know just gotta make sure it's clean everything's great now let's uh let's clean up the blade here as you can see here uh it has a nice like circle pattern here this is where like the metal has worn in a little bit over time this knife actually came you know when, when i first started opening it it had almost no fidget factor at all because it was just really stiff because well it hasn't been worn in yet and then through i'm assuming thousands of flips it has finally uh relaxed a little bit all right Clean, gonna clean the lock bar. Very important for the lock bar is that you gotta clean this portion here because that is where uh, the blade locks and you don't want that to slip in any way. Okay, just gotta make sure you gotta clean this side of it too. Now, it is at this point that I realized that I need a, uh, what do you call that? A cotton bud or, or cotton or a Q-tip to clean this up. But, I am me. And sometimes, Doing less is more. All right. So, this is turning out to be an okay disassembly. Let me just get the oil. Okay, not much to oil here, to be honest. Okay, I'm just gonna oil the bottom of the blade here. To be honest, when it comes to a lock back, you don't really need to do much because. You can pretty much get to all these surfaces from the outside of the blade. You just gotta tip it in, tip it in, tip it in, and then it should get there. But this is like that once every few months disassembly that you should do. Just gonna dip a little bit right there, spread it around. Now this is a mineral oil. Mineral oil, it is, there's a few uh, benefits about using mineral oil. Number one is that it makes for pretty good, but at the same time, very light loop. Okay, typically for knives, I tend to prefer a bit of a thicker loop. Okay, I'm spreading it out because I actually use a bit too much. Uh, it's typically better to use a bit of a thicker loop because it just helps keep gunk out of the uh, these crevices. Uh, it's it's an okay material to use. I mean, I wouldn't like suggest it if you're really into knives. I'm personally trying to get a knife pivot loop to use on uh, on on my knives because I had I've heard a lot of good reviews and it looks great on Instagram posts. All right, so let's settle. Let's just use the residual oil. Just spread on the lock bar. All right, so let's try to reassemble it. Okay, now if I'm not mistaken, the shallower side goes on the inside, and then the side that's bent more goes up on top. And then there's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there, there's a little hole there. That you just stick it in like so you just drop it in like that then this goes in like so and this is the part where I'm kind of curious what to do next do I put this in first let's try that a bit of a trial and error here do I put this in first or do I put the blade in first? I'm assuming let's put this in first. Okay, let's just reverse engineer the entire process. Okay, now because this screw right here which goes into lock bar experiences a lot of torque as well because it's kind of like going around here. Uh, it might be exposed to a bit of vibration. I'm just going to put just a little bit of lock tight in there. It's a tiny, even though these are Chicago screws and any movement it gets it goes around that pivot okay the friction the movement goes hits around this pivot just gonna make sure and you know it's not gonna hurt the knife or or anyone in general it's always good if you don't hurt anyone in general okay let's back it up first oops no it didn't want to go in to be honest guys i'm just a little bit tired it's like almost midnight at this point. But when you're gonna shoot a video, you gotta shoot a video, you know? You can't give any any excuses. Hold on. Okay, this is getting a little bit frustrating. Okay. Bear with me here. I can do this. Okay, let's try a different way. Let's try it this way. 
Oh, what the hell? Okay. Patience. Mr. EDC, patience. Alright. <clears throat> there you go. And I'm sure at this point, all the Loctite might have just like squished out. But yeah. Let's just stick it in anyway. Semi tighten it. Alright. That's good. Lock surface is clean. Alright. Now, uh, I really put oil on this. Mm. Since I'm putting it back in, I know. Some of that residual oil on the side there. Just to help give it that bit of a fidget factor. And help it to resist rust a bit more. Because we do live in Malaysia, it does tend to rust a bit more. Alright, so now with the spring tension, uh, this is sticking up. But once we put the blade in, okay, and put the pivot in, it should lock into place as usual first we put the Chicago screw in again it is a D shape but we shape all right okay now we just gotta feather it in sometimes it helps just to press down the lock bar so that you can manipulate the blade like so Look at this from the other side. Okay. There we go. Pivot in. And let's just screw this in. Let's take back our oops, T8 screw. Let's just close this up before it spills around. And it's a little shaky because, well, it's late night. It's a long day. I just broke my fast. Oh, and uh, happy fasting month to. Uh, I forgot. I forgot these things. Anyway, happy uh, bulan Ramadan to all my uh, mis uh, Muslim viewers out there. You know, I myself am Muslim, and I am fasting also. But you know what? Fasting is not an excuse not to continue doing what you love and continue working as so many people think it is. What really annoys me, okay, I'm gonna go into a bit of a rant here. It annoys me when people use fasting as an excuse to like take, take off, uh, take days off, tell their bosses they're tired, they can't work that day, use it as, as an excuse pretty much. When actually, fasting is not an excuse, fasting is to show you how good you have it and how you shouldn't take things like food and water and sexy time for granted all right almost forgot a bit of loctite around this pivot screw just a little bit hopefully i don't waste it all like i did just now Let me know in the comment section like what's your favorite uh, tool that you use, whether it's a Weha tool bit or whether it's, I don't know, something else. That is really tight. Hold on, let's, let's, put, in, let's put in the uh, D screws first. These are also T8. Put in this side. Now, for some reason, if you have noticed, I actually put uh, the pocket clip on the right hand side even though I am actually, sorry, I put a clip for left hand carry, <coughs> for left pocket carry even though I am right handed. And that's just to help out my left hand, I like, try, uh, I like to try to uh, 
be as ambidextrous as possible in my life. So what I tend to like to do is I like to practice uh, using things on both hands. Doesn't mean I'm ambidextrous. It just means that I like to uh, keep life a little bit more interesting sometimes. Okay, that's in. Time to get this in. There we, there we go. Just to be tightened up a little bit more. Am I using the wrong bit? Yeah, I'm using the right one. Just jumping a little bit. Hmm. My uh, bits are not of the highest quality. So I think it may have stripped out a little bit. Go back to T8. Okay, so I've tightened it. However, I can't untighten it now. Okay, I can. Okay. Let's just tighten it as much as I can before it starts jumping. And it has started jumping. I th yeah, it's just my, my my bits have worn out here. So it happens when you uh, invest in really cheap bit kits. Okay. So now what's happening is that the action is way too hard here. So I'm just going to back it off a little bit. Work it in a little bit. Can I flick this? Nope. That means it's still a little bit too tight. There we go. Nice and fidgety. No lock rock. Just a little bit side to side play. Still feels a little bit tight. No lock rock. No side to side play. I think I can back this out just a little bit. No side to side. No lock rock. All right. Just gonna tighten this just a wee bit. There we go. All right. So now I'm just going to leave it overnight for the uh, Loctite to uh, harden up. Alright guys, that was uh, the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys uh, learned something a little bit about the uh, Spider Code Dragonfly. And I promise, you now once I get a little bit more money, you know, I will invest in some much, much, much nicer uh, Torx bit kits. Uh, if you want to help me out, you want to help me uh, invest the channel, maybe uh, upgrade the channel, upgrade my tools, upgrade my gear a little bit for the channel, uh, do check out the Patreon account down below. Alright, that's all. Uh, this was Mr. EDC Ready and uh, yeah, stay ready.